Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Yourself, where we cover technology for everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you the process of selling a computer on eBay from start to finish. This video is aimed at those of you who have been looking to sell a tablet, a laptop, a phone, or even a desktop computer on eBay, but you're a little apprehensive about it because you don't know how to go about it. By the way, it's totally normal to feel a little stressed or anxious about selling on eBay the first time. I certainly was, uh, but luckily it's pretty straightforward so you have nothing to worry about. You'll be absolutely fine. This video aims to relieve any stress or anxiety you might have about the process as well as answer any questions to help you get off to a more confident start. Alright, let's get started. It is extremely important that your device is completely wiped before you ship it out to someone else. This will ensure a clean experience for the buyer, but more importantly, it will make sure that none of your personal information is still left on the device. The easiest way to do this in general is to reinstall the operating system. On mobile devices, this is often referred to as resetting to factory conditions. Now this process will vary depending on what device you have, so I will leave some guides down in the description uh, for all the major operating platforms like iOS, Android, Mac OS, and Windows. It's very important to thoroughly clean the outside of your device. This will make sure that the product looks good in the pictures we will be taking later, as well as make sure that the buyer doesn't leave you any negative feedback for shipping a gross device. Make sure to remove any cases and or stickers from the device. This is very important, but more on that later. Once the device is naked, wipe down surfaces, screens, and keys with isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth. While you can use a paper towel if necessary, you should be very careful not to scratch anything. It's also a good idea to get some compressed air and gently blow out any dust and crumbs that have accumulated around keys, speakers, trackpads, and air vents. If you are selling a laptop and want to go the extra mile, you can open up the laptop and blow out any dust that is caked into the fans or on the logic board. Now obviously you should only do this if you know what you are doing. If you are unsure, it's best to leave it alone. Now it's time for a photo shoot. You will want to capture well-lit, high-quality photos of your device to put on your eBay listing. Providing plenty of high-quality photos allows buyers to be more confident in purchasing or bidding on your listing. In fact, a listing with high-quality photos will often fetch a higher sale price than a listing with dark, grainy, or even too few photos. When taking photos, make sure you get every angle and surface of the device. This includes edges and corners. Also, take photos of any damage on the device, including scratches, dings, dents, and cracks. Trying to hide any damage is not only dishonest, but it will most likely result in the buyer wanting to return the product or leaving negative feedback, which can affect future success on eBay. Now, remember how I mentioned stickers and cases earlier in the video? Well, this is where that advice comes into play. Leaving stickers and cases on the device not only kind of makes your listing look trashy, but it can also make people suspicious that you might be hiding damage to the device. Now if you want to include a case with the device in the listing, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you have plenty of photos of the device without the case on, as well as with the case on. This is another one of those things that can make a huge difference in the success of your eBay adventure. Now on to creating your eBay listing. Now eBay only allows for 12 photos on a listing, so before you actually create one, you are going to want to narrow down your photo selection to the 12 most suitable. Make sure that your 12 final photos represent your device in a very clear and accurate way. Remember you can always go back and reshoot a few if need be. Now you are ready to create your listing. Now for this video I will assume that you've already created an eBay account and connected a PayPal account to said eBay account. However, I will leave some resources in the description below if you need some guidance. Once you are signed into eBay, go ahead and click Sell in the top right of the menu bar. In the What do you want to sell box, enter some basic keywords like the name of your device. Don't worry about getting it perfect, you will edit it later. Now eBay will bring you to a page full of devices that it believes to be the same or similar to yours. However, I don't recommend selling in these pre-made categories. I generally find you will be much more successful by creating your own new listing. To do this, we are going to click the blue link at the top right of the page labeled Create a New Listing. 
Then select the condition of your device, which for most of you will be used. You will now be taken to the page where you will fill out your listing. To start, you will want to finish your title. In the title, list the most important main features and specifications of your device. Start with the full name of your device. For example, I will put mid-2014 MacBook Pro Retina. Other important specs might include RAM size, storage size, and screen size. Also put the condition of your device in the title if possible. Don't worry about getting super specific, as we can do that in the description. Focus on making the title simple, attractive, and honest. Next, you can go ahead and add the photos you took earlier. Once uploaded, you will need to choose a main photo. This will be the first photo in your line of photos, as well as the photo people see when they come across your listing while scrolling. To do this, simply drag the photo you choose to be the first into the slot labeled Main Photo. After that, you just need to organize the photos in a way that makes the most sense. You don't need to worry all that much about the order, it's more of a polishing thing anyway. Having a good main photo is the most important. Next, you will want to fill out the details section of the listing as best as you possibly can. If you don't know something, Google around to see if you can find what you don't know. The more complete your information, the better. Just make sure the information you are pulling from your Google searches is accurate. Now it's time to fill out the description. This is where you should elaborate on what you put in your title, as well as add any additional information that you couldn't fit in the title. Be specific about where there is damage or wear on the device. Leave a detailed specifications list, list the accessories that will or won't be included, and just let the potential buyer know exactly what they would get if they bought your device. You don't have to write a paragraph or anything, just be clear and specific. Next step is pricing. Now let me make something very clear. Just because you paid X amount for your device when you bought it, doesn't mean it's worth X amount now. Most items, like cars, will depreciate based on age and condition. If you want to sell your device, you will have to price it competitively. It's up to you to look on eBay to see what other devices similar to yours in spec and condition are going for, and price accordingly. Once you've picked your price, you can choose how you want to list your device. The simplest way is to just use the Buy It Now feature. This will give shoppers the option to simply purchase the device for the price you set, or not. You could also create an auction, where shoppers will bid on the product for a set amount of time, at the end of which the highest bidder will win the item. Or you can do both. It's really up to you how you go about it, both have their benefits and drawbacks. For new sellers, I would simply suggest you pick the one you're most comfortable with. Personally, I use auctions when I'm not quite sure what the market value for my device is, like with older gaming laptops, so I will start the bidding on the lower side and let the bidders decide what it's worth. Next is shipping. Shipping can be kind of tricky. I can't give you a whole lot of information here as it's very specific to each person's scenario. Make sure to choose the shipping service that will work for you, and then decide how you want to handle shipping costs. I generally recommend having the buyer pay shipping depending on their location. That'll be the easiest. Finally, make sure local pickup is turned off, unless that's something you want to do. Select whether or not you will want to donate to charity, then click list it. It may throw back an error if something wasn't filled out correctly. In that event, just fix the errors and keep retrying until it goes through. Once it goes through, your listing is live and you can take a look at what it looks like. Now it's time to print your shipping label. Once you've sold your item, you will need to print a shipping label for the box. eBay provides this for you, so it's not a big deal at all. Simply click on My eBay, then click on Sold on the left hand side. Then find your listing and click on the Print Shipping Label button. Then select the shipping service that you want to ship your product with. You should stick with the same carrier that you listed the product with to keep it consistent for the buyer. It's best to choose the option that has the buyer selected badge on it. Once you're done with that, select purchase and print label. You will then be taken to a screen where you will pay for the shipping through PayPal. If you selected buyer pay shipping when you set up the listing, then the cost of shipping will be made up for when you receive your payment. If you provided free shipping, then you won't be reimbursed. Either way, you will have to pay to get the label. Once you've paid, you can then print your shipping label. 
Packaging and shipping your device properly is vital to your success at selling on eBay. An item that is packaged poorly may be damaged in shipping, at which point the buyer would probably want to return the item for a refund. If that happens, you're not only out the money you would have made from selling the product, but you will receive back a damaged device, so you've lost value and money there as well. When it comes to laptops, tablets, and phones, it's best to put them back in their original boxes if you still have them. If you don't, that's okay. You just need to make sure to wrap them up really well in a protective material like bubble wrap. Choose a box that's in decent shape. If you don't have a box, you can pick one up at your local post office or a shipping center. In my case, I will be reusing an old box. As you can see, it's seen better days, but as long as the box doesn't have any holes or tears, you should be good to go. Make sure all corners of the device are covered, and add extra packing material around the box to make sure the device doesn't shift all over the place during shipping. Once you've done this, close up the box and give it a gentle shake to make sure the device doesn't slide around. When taping up the box, feel free to be a bit liberal with the tape. Make sure all areas of the box that can be open are taped shut. Finally, print out the eBay provided shipping label and tape it to the box. Make sure not to tape over the barcode and to follow any instructions that printed with it. It's also a good idea to black out any old addresses or markings on the box, just to make sure that they aren't confused for anything by the shipping services. Once you've packaged your device and attached the shipping label, you're all ready to go. All that's left is to head over to the post office or shipping center and send it off. Now there are a few things to consider after you've shipped your item. First off, realize that eBay may not release your funds until it's been confirmed that the buyer received the product. This is very common, especially for first time sellers. Also, your work isn't quite done yet. It's best practice to monitor the shipment tracking information that eBay provides to make sure that the item is actually making its way to the buyer. Also, you should check your eBay messages pretty frequently to make sure you don't miss any questions or concerns from the buyer after they've received the product. Finally, be open and willing to back up your item. If the buyer finds an issue with the device you sold that you either didn't know about or maybe wasn't very clear in the listing, own up to it. Offering small partial refunds or offering to help fix any issues the buyer may be having will go a long way in making sure that the buyer is happy and that you get good feedback on your eBay profile. So that is it for my eBay selling guide. I really hope some of you found this video helpful in some way. If it did, if it helped you make your first eBay sale or just helped you with some general knowledge, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear you guys' feedback. Also, if you still have questions that weren't addressed in the video, please leave those down there as well. I will be sure to do my best to answer all your questions and offer any advice that I can. Finally, if you have any tips, tricks, or suggestions for new sellers, definitely leave those down in the comments as well. I would certainly appreciate that, and I'm sure the people watching uh, would certainly appreciate that as well. That would be super, super great and make the video even better. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out some more Tech Yourself content. We do a lot of budget tech on this channel, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. Uh, other than that, I hope to see you in the next video.